Elizabeth is going to say some books. Stand like this. Tell him the truth. Thank you very much. I want to state uh, today that um, I received calls from um, Ruaraka constituency, Riverside area, which is in uh, Babadogo ward, from uh, as early as uh, 4.30 up to 7, people were being gunned down. And I want to state that on the scene, all the bodies that were lying down, both bullet wounds and panga cuts. That means that they were shot and then after they were dead, they should be cut. The last person who was shot in it was somebody who was going to church and decided to stop and have a look at the bodies. He was shot. A motorbike. This person was driving this motorbike and 90 thought was uh, mourning with them. He stopped what was happening, like he wanted to know. He pulled out his car at close range and shot at that person and then just continued driving towards um, Karyobangi area. A lady has been shot, personally known to me. Her name is Karo, a young woman who earns a living selling in uh, some kiosk. I think she was on her way to Markiti in the morning to get her vegetables or something like that. I want to state that from eyewitnesses and from the people who are shot, who are known to me personally, as um, uh, you know that I was the area MP for Kasarani, uh, which includes Babadogo area, and these are people, young men, who are known to me personally. If I state as I stand here, that this is nothing but ethnic cleansing. If I had a doubt in my mind before, what I've seen today, the calculation with which the executions were taken, the, the, the careful choosing of the people who have been failed, I do not fear that I am contradicting myself if I state clearly that it, this is nothing short of ethnic cleansing. It was so calculated that I am told the first group of people who were executing this um, massacre came in motorbikes. They would just be driving past, slow down, pull down their guns and shoot. And when you see both of, most of those uh, 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 bodies, they have been shot at close range, like the lady has just been shot here. Um, uh, an innocent lady. And I even have, uh, when I arrived, uh, we collected so many of these eh, um, spent cartridges and you know, um, we have kept them. These ones I'm not releasing because every time we always release this, we are given back civilian cartridges. And so this is nothing but a calculated move by somebody whose intention is either to plunge this country into civil war of sorts or to completely exterminate a community from Kenya or I don't know what they are intending to do because uh, it is it, it, it's really sad but what is even more shocking is that with that shock when Wanainchi even attempt to mourn they are still shot we are still tear gassed we are still being chased you know so in Kenya we have lost all rights even the right to mourn our dead. So your child will be shot, but the mother cannot access because the mother's body is also just or maybe also is shot. So I don't know where we are leading, but all of them, the 11, seven bodies were hurriedly removed from the scene. When I arrived, five bodies, they were running by the police and, uh, and Wanainchi, because Wanainchi was saying, but sure, that place becomes a crime scene. A crime scene. We have not seen policemen coming here to even take statements. We have not seen policemen coming to ask. Uh, 
rivers and uh, that water that they always sprinkle on when people disperse then they hurriedly take those bod bodies out of the sea an opinion absolute intimidation to intimidate especially the NASA brigade from continuing in this course, in my own opinion, this is um, extermination of a magnitude that now calls for international attention. We are being killed at a rate that cannot just uh, be normal. Yesterday, only yesterday, 18 lives were lost yesterday. Today, 14 lives actually now, today, because two lives were lost in Madare North at around midnight and the police took off with the bodies. Now 11 plus the last one that was lost. Uh, now we are doing 14 plus 18 in less than 24 hours. In my opinion, that is, that is genocide. That is genocide. That is completely unacceptable. And, and, and I want to challenge, I want to challenge the church in Kenya. I want to challenge religious leader, leaders who keep quiet until things have gone to the extreme. Then they make grand uh, trips to state house and other places. Then they come and call some uh, sort of uh, uh, press uh, conferences calling for peace and calm. How comes they do not address those who are killing innocent Kenyans? And our constitution even states, if somebody is suspected of, of being a criminal or whatever, how comes they have never been uh, arrested? There is no criminal. These were Kenyans who woke up early either to go to church or to go to the market to, to, to look for, uh, you, know, you know, to seek ways of feeding their, their families and innocently without any provocation at all. There were no demonstrations at five in the morning in Babadogo. There was nothing happening. These were innocent Wanainchi and they have been killed. And when we went to mourn, even in the presence of a figure like um, uh, His Excellency Raila, a figure respected internationally, we were tear gassed. They threw tear gas in his presence. We, I mean, there was gunshots, even in the presence of leaders. So if this can happen, to us leaders. What do you think Wanainti are going through? We are here in Nairobi Hospital now because one member of parliament, Honorable Oluoj, has been shot. I was with him on top of uh, uh, his vehicle, uh, the, I mean, you know, just, you know, going round when he was shot in the leg. And thank God, I think they were aiming at him, at his heart or the head. It's only that there were potholes, so the, the, the car was not so steady. That's how they managed to shoot the leg. So I think this is not now acceptable at all. It cannot continue like this. Thank you. Now, um, we are addressing this press conference at Nairobi Hostel <coughs> because we came to see the Honorable Member of Parliament for Madari, who, as you have already been told, was attacked by the police in our presence when we went to look at what had happened in Madari. Now, we had occasion to talk to you yesterday at the city mortuary, where we'd gone to see dead bodies. There were 15 dead bodies at the city mortuary yesterday. There were three at the Chiromo mortuary, making a total of, of 18. I see police talk about um, mob justice. Uh, of people who were looting. But these people were shot by the guns. These people were shot by the guns uh, and the cartridges were collected. Basically the work of the Kenyan police. What has happened today must it's also have been planned. It must have, it's a work of careful planning and targeting particular people. We have particular communities who are being targeted here. I think we have said so many times that as Kenyans we must respect the rights of each and every Kenyan community. 44 of them live here not by permission of any other, not by invitation of any community. So there must be some kind of respect and tolerance. And when you hear 
leaders begin to make very belligerent statements which are amounting to incitement. We are driving this country to hell. We are driving this country to hell. I think leaders must be responsible. Leaders must act responsibly and stop incitement. When we came from uh, the trip the day before yesterday, we were attacked not by thugs, by policemen, throwing tear gas, throwing uh, water cannons at us. What crime had we committed? Coming back home. And the Kenyan media must go beyond this ethnic consideration. If you look at the papers yesterday, it's as if we were ourselves the aggressor. You don't direct the accusation where it belongs. This was a state-sponsored thuggery against innocent citizens receiving one of their leaders returning back home. Why was the police parading on the roads, attacking us the way they were attacking, using live bullets against innocent people? This must be condemned in the strongest terms possible. In a civilized society, you cannot tolerate this kind of thing. They, you're putting this country into a precipice. They are pushing it into a precipice. They are telling, instead of the president and his deputy apologizing, they are in fact continuing to incite people. This basically shows that we, we need international intervention. We need international intervention. We are dealing with people who just came from The Hague the other day. And they are already trying to take this country back to The Hague, the way they are doing it. The international community must intervene at this stage and help to move this country from precipice. Otherwise, there's going to be turmoil in our country. I urge our people to remain vigilant, remain patient, because this matter must end. This matter must end. And those who are killing by the guns, as the Bible says, those who kill by the sword will die by the sword. So this is the time for the voices of reason to speak. The members of the church, the leadership of the church, need to speak now. We are shocked to see the church silenced, trying to equate wrong and right. There can never be a, 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 an equality between wrong and right. So you must point the accusation where it rightly belongs, the leaders of the church. But when church, churches are quiet, we remember Henry Okulu. We remember Bishop Mugwe. We remember Bishop Gitari. Those who were able to stand up and speak on the help of their flock. This is the time. But as politicians, we want to say here and say, NASA is not cowed. NASA will not be intimidated. NASA will not be pushed to surrender. NASA will stand firm with the people of Kenya to ensure that justice is ultimately obtained. We must look beyond tomorrow as Kenyans. Life is not going to end tomorrow. It will begin and it will continue until justice is received. We must have electoral justice in Kenya. So the time when elections are rigged must end. And this is ending in the year 2017. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. Mike.